You know, every single day, the exciting thing about it is that there's something that the Holy Spirit want to accomplish through you. That's why he gave you life. So, you have to intentionally bring yourself into the understanding of what it is exactly that he wants from you. Every day, the Holy Spirit is moving your body in a direction. He's moving your body in a direction and you can't be lazy about it. You can't fight it or resist it. And you can't let yourself procrastinate on it either. You have to be intentional about achieving it. You have to get it done with might and power. Every single day, there's something that the Holy Spirit has predestined you to do in that specific day. And so you're alive to get that done. So you have to be intentional about doing it. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says that you are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works, which before he ordained that you should walk in them. You are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works that he has before ordained that you should walk in them. So before you was even in today, before you're in tomorrow, before tomorrow comes, there are works that God has preordained that you're doing today. And you can only get to those works if you're led by the Spirit. Now, saints, if you don't be led by the Spirit, you're going to be led by devils. It's impossible for you not to be led by something. Though people think that they're independent in life and they're just in a league of their own, it's impossible. You have to be either led by the Spirit or led by devils. You, you have to be led by either or. You can't be uh, one, one-sided or, or in a league of your own. You have to be led by someone. Each day you're being led by someone. Even if you think you're being led by self, you're being led by devils. So if you don't become intentional about being led by the spirit, the devils will take you down a path that make you more weak, more um, manipulated by temptation. And you'll have to destroy yourself until you officially manifest death. But you'll have to destroy yourself. Saints, just think about it. Look at all the things that people do in life. Look at the habits that people do in life. You literally see people killing themselves all the time. They say, I'm going to go take a smoke break. They go and go kill themselves right in front of you. And then you think that that person is sane mentally? <laughs> They're pitting smoke inside of their body. And you think that that person is not sick. Saints, we meet sick people all the time. Sick people are 97% of the earth's population. Everybody's sick. Even if you see somebody drinking beer, it's sick. Sickness is all around us. And you even have dimensions of sickness in yourself. Because there's moments where you can't catch what God wants from you. And yet, there's no determination to catch it. There's no determination to achieve that wisdom. Because sometimes God could dangle wisdom right in front of you and he want to see, do you really want to know this? Do you really want the truth? Do you really want understanding? And saints, a lot of times people are not there. Saints, uh, if you're taking notes, write this down. You must become dedicated to finding out things that God wants to tell you that he hasn't yet told you. 
Wow. You must become dedicated to find out things that God wants to tell you that he has not yet told you. That's big. That's big. That's big. Because if God wants to tell you and he hasn't yet told you, it's not God having a glitch. It's something wrong with your soul. That God is not in the place to converse like that with you because you're not going to receive it. You're not going to hear it. And you're not even, even going to make changes to what he's going to tell you. You're not going to make no changes. Since you know what's sad? In life, the natural man has more influence on man's mind than God most times. You have to go to a doctor for them to tell you something for then you to start making changes. But if you check in the spirit, God was telling you that 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago. But you're not going to listen to God. You're going to listen to a flesh and blood. Saints, that's why God created the law of the prophet. Because he know that man not going to listen to him in the intellect. So the prophet will come to you. Saints, look, Nathan come tell David. He give him a narrative about a wicked man, a narrative about a wicked man. And then he tells David, he says, uh, what do you think about this? He's like, this man wicked. And, and Nathan said, you are that man. But see, Nathan is the one that could verbally speak to David, David not going to listen to this while he in the floor of doing what he's doing. He's not going to listen to it. But he's going to listen to this, uh, this, this scenario with uh, uh, Nathan, the verbal man, the, the, audio, the audible man. He's going to listen there. But he's not going to listen mentally. He's going to keep on going about his business. Now, saints, how do you know that you're operating from life and not death? You could pass from death to life according to God's mercy. He could pass you from death to life. He could position you from death to life. But how do you know I'm now operating in life? If you take a note, write this down. Life operation means that I am persuaded I am fully focused on getting the truth no matter which angle God chooses to speak it. I'm dedicated to getting the truth no matter which angle God gives it to me. He could give it to me about my relationships. He could give it to me about my children. He could give it to me about my living arrangement. He could give it to me about my responses. Wherever he wants to give me the truth, I have positioned myself to relieve, receive it. Life operation, life, life rather, life operation. When you're operating from life, you become willing and ready to hear the tough truth of God. That's what the life operation is all about, is connectivity to the truth of God. Now, since oftentimes in your life, you'll have moments where you're actually in a place where you don't want to hear the truth. There's people, sometimes they start dating and they start enjoying the person so much they actually don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear somebody say it's not going to work. One time I knew of somebody, um, it was a male. They had got into a relationship and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, uh, do you know this one right here? He said, this one being tricked and wasting his time because the woman that he's with is going to be short term. Now watch this. The Holy Ghost came back to me and said, but we're not saying nothing. Wow. The Holy Ghost came back and said, but we're not saying nothing to him. And the Holy Ghost said, because he's enjoying the person too much. There's nothing that we say to him that's going to move him because his persuasion is in the moments that he feel 
and what he sees right now. And saints, within less than days, nasty breakup, nasty argument, nasty fight, they enemies. There's a lot of stuff like that. Saints, why do you think I don't prophesy on Joe Biden? Because I'm smart. <laughs> but, but saints, I know some stuff. I know some stuff with law. I know some stuff with uh, uh, um, I'm smart. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm smart. I'm smart. That's that's what now you know. I'm smart. Why are you gonna prophesy on somebody and they got CIA and everybody? Why, why are you gonna pit that type of pressure on yourself? Oh, well, God gonna deliver us. Okay, all right. God don't deliver stupid. God don't deliver stupid. You can't put yourself in a predicament and say, God gonna deliver me. No, God deliver predicaments that he scheduled. He don't deliver predicaments that are not scheduled by him. And saints, I want you to understand this as a prophet. There's many things that I know that I don't talk about. There's a lot of things that I know prophetically that I don't discuss. There's things that the Holy Ghost talk a lot to me about because he know I ain't got no big mouth. I could hear him and I don't need no fame. I don't need nobody to look at me like I'm some great seer and understand it. I prophesy according to the wisdom of the spirit. If I know something and I know it real good and the Holy Ghost don't want me to talk it, bless God, I ain't saying nothing. It's going to stay sacred. It's going to stay silent. It's going to stay st stuck. I ain't moving my mouth and talk about it. But here on the other hand, there's a lot of people, God tell you something, you want to run your mouth all over the place. God be looking at you like, yeah, that's the last time you're going to hear from me talking to you about something like this. Because I know you got a running mouth. Saints, God is a person. God is a person with eyes and ears and emotions, and he's a person with intellect, and he's a person with observation, and he's a person that looks at you, he studies you, he watches your reaction. Look, he watched Moses' reaction. He saw Moses struck the rock, and then he said, oh, hell no. Oh, no, you're not getting into what I promise you. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I know I told you all this stuff, but never mind. No, nah, I just saw something. I changed my mind. That's God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. He's a person. He studies you. You can say, you can have a good day with God yesterday. You could be sore in prayer and stuff, and then you can start talking stupid today. God will look at you with a side eye and say, okay. I may not utterly disconnect myself from you, but I'm going to schedule an extension of some training because I'm going to train you. I'm going to get this hell out of you. I'm going to get this evil out of you. You shouldn't have said that. So I'm going to beat you down to the, the pathway I picked for you. I'm going to beat it off of you. I'm not going to let you keep letting that evil rise up out of your heart. I'm going to do something to train you not to play with me. That's God. That's Father. So saints, it's, it's so funny. People be like, oh, God is a loving father. So that takes away you don't play with him. Because how many parents do you know that are fathers that their child will be obviously disrespecting them, doing everything that they don't like, and the father tells them, I'll never get angry at you. <laughs> I'll never be upset with you. <laughs> And then you watch pastors. You go walk in front of a pastor while he preaching and teaching and you keep on walking and the ushers tell you to sit down and you won't sit down. And then you run up to the pulpit while the pastor is preaching and you watch his reaction. Watch. See if he going to look at you and tell him, <laughs> I'll never get angry at you. There's nothing you can do to, for me to get angry at you. <laughs> There's nothing you can do 
I love you with an everlasting love. Ain't nothing you can do to make me angry. And they can walk up there, they slap the pastor. There's nothing you can do to you for me to get angry at you. Saints, do you understand how stupid that is? And that's what that's 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 how people want to view God. You want to understand how God is? Go read Revelation chapter 20. Go read Revelation chapter 19. Read the end of the Bible that's in the New Testament. And read what type of God you are messing with. His love ain't stupidity. God ain't stupid. God know if you doing something he told you not to do, if you live in a way that he told you not to live, he right there watching you. He not up there tussle. <laughs> I'll never be angry at you. Wow. Saints, where you live? All right. Say somebody come to your house right now. They say, can I come inside your house? You say no. They, they push themselves inside the house. They ain't got no gun or nothing. They ain't threatening you with nothing. But they said, I just want to come in here to see how it is. And then they go take a seat on your couch. And then they say, hold on, I got to use the restroom. They go to the restroom. They come out. They say, I want to cook something. They go inside the kitchen. They eat the meal. They say, I want to take a shower. They take a shower inside your... You don't call 911. Why? Because somebody done trespassed against you. Somebody done trespassed against you. They went against what you prefer. Now think about this. Imagine going against what God prefers for you. Remember... Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, you are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus for good works unto good works, which he before ordained that you should walk in them. Ephesians 2 10 saying that God had a scenery of what he preferred for you. Now watch this here. Imagine you going against everything that God saw you do and prefer and you thinking that God is smiling in heaven. <laughs> Look at her. That's just my child. That's just my child right there. They're so amazing to me. There, I just love them. That's what people got in their mind that God is doing. He's smiling all the time because Jesus laid down his life. But you didn't lay down yours. Imagine you saying that Jesus laid down his life and you, with that knowledge, still haven't laid down yours, which means that you're an enemy of God. You're mocking God. Because you already know something that Jesus did. You already got an example. Just think about you going against what God perverts. What you think God going to do? The Bible said those he loves, he chastens. That means that who, who God loves, he going to whoop your tail. That's what it means. He going to teach you that you can't take his love and step on it. He going to show you, I want you to love me back. Those he loves, he chastens. That means that he going to beat you. The beating is love. It's not hate. Because that love is actually giving you dunamis power to be delivered from hate towards him. Let's go here to John chapter 15. Let's go here to John chapter 15. And saints, every day you got to be intentional about lead, being led by the spirit. You got to embrace pain. The pain, um, there's pain in the spirit because your body wants to be lazy. And so you, you're going to have pain when you're in the spirit because your body is a part of you. You can't deny your body. Your body is going to be a part of you. And your body don't want to go through what the spirit is taking it through. Your body, your body don't want to work out. Your body don't want to. It don't want to do a lot of things that the spirit will demand of it. 
you are the one that has to do it by force. Saints, every day that you wake up, do you feel like going to work? No. You ever work overtime? Do you feel, did you feel always like working overtime? No. You ever been driving on the street while, while, while you heading to work and you feel groggy? You feel like you ain't getting enough sleep? Did you feel like going into work that day? No. You ever took your lunch break and say like, I wish the day was over today? Yes. Why? Because everybody has slothfulness in them. Everybody has laziness in them. And what is beneficial to you, you don't want to bend and fit yourself into it. <laughs> it's beneficial, but you don't want to bend and fit yourself to, to operate in it. It's beneficial, but you don't want to do it. Saints, I work out. You think I always want to work out? Do you think that I always feel good while I'm working out? Saying I don't worked out before it felt, it felt like I'm about to pass. I felt like I'm about to die. <laughs> I don't want saints. I remember I done played pickup games, basketball, full court. I, I, I'm playing full court. I ain't in line no more. I, I'm tired. I'm tired, man. And then saints, I don't know if you understand. If you jump up for a rebound. It's like you take 70% of your air out of you. Saints, everything that's beneficial for you is not going to feel pleasurable while you're doing it. That's the weapon of wisdom. The weapon of wisdom operates without slavery to feeling. If you take your notes, write that down. The weapon of wisdom, it operates without slavery to feeling. Saints, I done did nine hour broadcasts. I done did 11 hour broadcasts nonstop. No bathroom breaks. I done did that. Do you think that during that, you talk about, oh, I'm in the glory. I feel so good. No, your body is in hell. Your body is feeling crazy. But it is your spirit that is operating for the benefits of other people's spirit to operate. Saints, just think about it. Jesus is in the will of God. But he gets to the flow of carrying the cross and can't even carry it. There's somebody needs to help him carry the cross. It's not because Jesus is some weakly unable person. He can't do the will of God. It's because he is fasting. His body don't got physical energy. And even though the anointing and the glory and the fire and the power is all up in his body, his body is still going through weakness. His body is still going through the issue of dehydration, tiredness, fatigue. With this understanding, there's something powerful that I'm letting you understand here. I'm showing you that don't think that your divinity means ain't nothing. Like I'm never going to have a dry spurt. I'm never going to have a spurt where I, 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 I'm, I'm in a place where it's like it's difficult for me to obey God. Like I'm always going to be up. I'm always, no, 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 no. Your body not always going to be in agreement with God's path. And that's how you dis dissect the fool from the faithful. That's how you know who is wise and who is wicked. Because people that have those moments where their bodies start rising up, they lean to their body because their body is their priority. But the people that are of the spirit, they disregard the body to continue the path of the straight and narrow. That's how you know 
from the warriors to the wicked. That's how you know the strong to the for, to the sinful, the righteous to the rebellious. That's how you know. Because if you be of the spirit, you're not going to betray the spirit because your body is howling against you. If the Holy Ghost tell me, I want you to run for 20 minutes. If I get to 17 minutes, I'm not going to say I'm going to stop because my body start talking to me. And I'm not going to fear death because if the Holy Ghost said it, the Holy Ghost is the confidentiality of that moment. You're holding on to the Holy Ghost word, not the word of your energy, not the word of your body. People leave the path of God because they don't pit their priority in the Holy Ghost. They pit their priority in what they feel. And if they feel something, they lean and cater to what they feel. That's not the Holy Ghost life. The Holy Ghost life is you overriding your body, your senses, and what you see, and you doing what God tells you, even if it's painful. Why do you think a lot of people don't walk in the fullness of Christ. I mean the ability to do miracles. I mean the ability to the Lord can't heal cavities. The Lord can't heal cavities. Yes, God created dentists, but the Lord can't heal dent cavities. People don't even imagine God doing the supernatural no more. Yes, saints, I, I, I want, I, I'm, I'm real, I'm real, I'm real uh, clear and plain when I deal with wisdom and understanding. I tell you all the time, the Holy Spirit will work through medicine. The Holy Spirit will work through stuff. But I'm telling you, if the Lord tell you that he going to heal your cavity, and and he he not talking about the doctor way, the dentist way, the dentist way rather. What are you going to do? It's different if he sent. Oftentimes he gonna send you because there's a purpose. Oftentimes he sends you to the dentist because there's a purpose. He he actually wants you to go through process. And there's a purpose why he lets you go through that pain of the process and stuff like that. There's a lot of purpose to that. Saints, there's a purpose to that. And, and the purpose is not always the same. I've known of people in this life that they like to argue, they like to fight, combat, blah, 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 and then they have tooth pain. So there's different purposes. <laughs> Yeah, me and you both know you you use a troublemaker and then your tooth start hurting. Yeah, this is a purpose. But for somebody else, the purpose is different. Everything could be a learning experience, though, because you'll have to learn how to floss your teeth. Did you know that tooth pain is connected to flossing your teeth? It is the food that be inside of your teeth that you can't see that be causing your enamel to weaken, to cause the bones, to cause everything that's in your gums to start weakening. It be the lack of flossing. Now, mostly everybody brush their teeth. But not everybody floss. And for you to floss, it's like you washing your shoulders, but not your bottom. 
<laughs> did, did you did you caught that narrative? You know how ludicrous that is. You up there. And then you walk out. I mean, you done did this for three days now. Saints, I'm the type of person, I'm just letting you know, I'm the type of person. If I'm somewhere and somebody's sitting down and they get up, I'm not going to sit down where they sit down. <laughs> I'm not going to sit down where they sit down. Now, I'm going to go and get my cardio in. Bless God, I'm going to go and get my cardio in. That's what I'm going to go and do. I'm going to be all right. No, I just get my no, I just get my cardio up. I'm gonna stand right here and burn some calories. If I see somebody get up, <laughs> yeah. So um, so let me ask you something. Imagine if you spend your whole life brushing your teeth and not flossing. Your teeth been eating out since you was a child. Are you seeing this? So by the time you get a certain age and you start having problems, you don't know. You actually bless that them problems then affect you all the time because for years your teeth been eating out. Your gums been eating out. You know why? Because no flossing. Flossing is very important. Imagine you could brush your teeth and the food that you had three weeks ago is still inside of your enamel. It's still inside of your teeth, rather, your, your gum area. Think about that. Saints, do you, you understand how serious that is? That you could brush your teeth for a whole month and the food that you ate four weeks ago is still inside of your teeth. Now you know why stuff decay. And saints, this is also what goes on when you receive knowledge and you're not a doer of the knowledge. You're dying slow, unknowingly. You have cavities. Because you're looking at stuff like, well, I wash myself because I heard it. I wash myself because I do understand what this is saying. I, I wash myself because I can comprehend that this powerful. But you're not a doer of that word. So you have cavities inside of you. All right, look at John 15. Look what it says. It says, now you are clean through the word which I've spoken to you. John 15, 3. 